I was never much for Static X, if I'm being completely honest here. Granted, a few tracks would make their way onto some angry adolescent burnt CDs in the early 2000s and kind of made their way into my CD booklet. And the group was my first introduction to industrial music, so to speak. But I never considered myself a fan per se, but more of a dude who liked a few songs. And I've seen the band reach what I thought was the lowest of the low at the time. See now it's going down. It down for the world to see you. So naturally, I dropped off and proceeded to not care too much about the band for the next decade or so. And with many other bands from my day as a confused gothic tryhard youth, I found their story turned out to be both interesting and appalling. Now I feel that music is an art form that should be respected. And you know, I guess that leaves open a pretty wide net of possibilities. Whether it's recording a hit song on a shitty tape recorder, or rapping over some beats you made in the basement with a free program, or running a fledgling YouTube channel, which you should all subscribe to right now. Go ahead. And I think if someone spends the best years of their life creating and curating said art, to be left for the world after they're gone, you know, the worst thing you can do is take it away from them in death and taint their legacy. And when we're done with this tour, it's my turn to quit. He's gonna quit after this tour, and then him, Ken J, and Koichi are gonna reform and call themselves Static X, and then I'm gonna have a band called Static X featuring Wayne Static. All right. And then we're gonna have lawsuits over who gets to use the name, and it's gonna get really nasty. Static X formed in 1994 after Wayne Static's former band, Deep Blue Dream, decided to call it quits. Another former member of that group being Ken J, who would go on to be integral to Static X. Deep Blue Dream apparently even auditioned a pre-famed Billy Corgan. Static and Ken J would soon move to Los Angeles to start a new band with guitarist Emerson Swinford, whom they had met through their mutual friend, Chicago singer-songwriter PJ Olsen. So basically, the Alan Parsons Project and Rod Stewart's guitarist helped Static X get going. They eventually formed a band called Drill, which included Tony Campos on bass, and started performing in the LA music scene. Swinford would soon leave to be badass, and they recruited guitarist Kyochi Fukada, and would then rename the band Static, which was pretty lame and actually was already in use by a few other bands. So they added the X to differentiate themselves a bit. The timing was right for the band's sound, and they garnered attention from Warner Brothers Records, who had some similar sounding artists on their roster, and who I hope doesn't copyright strike this video. And with the new metal climate taken over, the band's aggressive, industrial, upbeat style was welcomed by the adolescent masses, and in 1998 the band would release their debut, Wisconsin Death Trip, on Warner Brothers Records. The album would spawn three successful singles, and the band would tour heavily for the album, performing twice at Ozfest. I remember this one in particular because it sampled one of my favorite movies. The band had pretty quick success in the scheme of things, and Wayne had this to say about their early days. It was really just a whirlwind, and I barely remember it. We worked so hard and toured so hard that I don't even remember most of it. We played 300 shows in the first year and we just never went home. We would tour on one tour for six or eight weeks and that tour would end somewhere on the east coast and we'd drive a couple of days and hook up with Slayer and tour with them for four or five weeks. That tour ends and then we'd drive a few days to Boston to hook up with Seven Dust. We just kept going and going and never went home. I mean I didn't even have a home to go to. I look back at it now and I kind of wish I had taken the time to sit back and appreciate it more. Maybe get to know some of the other bands a little more and spend some time having fun and partying and maybe even taking some pictures. The album would go platinum in 2001 
and the pressure was on for the follow-up. Wayne Static would prove to have a strong work ethic and plan for the group, as he would begin writing for the next album while still on tour, often without the involvement of the other members. This would eventually lead to guitarist and songwriter of the group Koichi Fugada to leave the group. Dissatisfied with the creative process or lack thereof, the band would then go on to record the next album consisting mainly of Wayne Static pin tunes as a three-piece. Despite this, their next album, Machine, would go on to eventually be certified gold, with 500,000 units sold. Fukara would then be replaced by former dope guitarist, Trip Eisen. And this might be the first real problem the band would encounter. Well, uh, besides hooking up with new metal guru, Jonathan Davis, who would contact Wayne Static in 2002 for his involvement in the abysmal film soundtrack for Queen of the Damned because every vampire wants to be in corn. It was up to Davis to come up with the soundtrack, however Static X wasn't able to participate due to label disputes, but Wayne would contribute vocals for a track on the soundtrack, and this would lead to the label recommending a more melodic sound which I thought was a good idea. And with Trip Eisen writing a lot of the songs, and the contributions of legendary session drummer Josh Fries, the band would put out some of their most interesting music of their career. Although, Josh Fries was present to replace founding member Ken J, who left, apparently due to Static's growing drug abuse. The band would keep at it, and their third album, Shadow Zone, was released on October 7th, 2003. It debuted at number 20 on the Billboard 200 charts, but failed to achieve the platinum or gold-selling status of their prior two albums. However, it did potentially have a commercially viable crossover track, The Only, which was pretty popular. The band would then hire on Nick of Shiro, formerly of Cedar, who was selected as Kinjay's official replacement. The first real trouble the band found itself associated with was when guitarist Trip Eisen was caught being a really naughty boy. While a member of Static X, Eisen was arrested on February 10th, 2005 on a felony charge in Orange County for having unlawful sexual intercourse with an underage girl. He was released on bail after only a few hours in custody and just two weeks later on February 24th, Eisen was again arrested in California by New Jersey detectives and ultimately convicted of luring into a motor vehicle. He has since spoken out about the incident and has expressed true remorse and regret and has even gotten back into music. Uh, you can look it up if you like. Trip Eisen's contributions, however, were left intact on the next album, 2005's Start a War, which would reach number 29 on the Billboard 200 and land them a track on a WWE video game. The album would also mark the return of original guitarist Fukada, who was also rumored to have finished the guitar tracks after Iceland's arrest and firing from the group. The DVD included with the album would then need last minute re-edits to get rid of as much footage of Eisen as humanly possible, and for good reason, of course. Cannibal was released on April 3rd, 2007, and marked the studio return of their original guitarist, Koichi Fukada, after the fallout from Eisen. The album debuted at number 36 on the US Billboard 200. To date, the album has sold around 260,000 copies, and the album received mostly positive reviews from critics and fans. Cannibal would experiment with a more aggressive approach and heavy use of guitar solos, and would be the first album to feature the same lineup as the album preceding. Things were looking up as the group seemed to be better than ever and even got a slot on the 2007 Ozfest and a track on the Saw 3 soundtrack. However, the album still debuted at number 16 on the Billboard Top 200 charts and sold 19,000 copies in the United States in its first week, making it the band's highest charting album since 2001's Machine, and the album received mostly positive reviews. In 2009, the band would release Cult of Static, an album being named to honor the longtime fans, and would see the group return to form in a lot of ways. 
gaining them a big tour and even a track on Punisher Warzone. And the album had an appearance from Dave Mustaine. The album would continue their aggressive sound and heavy use of solos, much to fans' delight. The album debuted at number 16 on the Billboard Top 200 chart and sold 19,000 copies in the U.S. in its first week alone, making it the band's highest charting album since 2001's Machine. And the album received mostly positive reviews from music critics and fans alike. Unknown to the band, this would be their final release with Wayne. Wayne would express interest in a solo album during this time, and Compost would leave to join Ministry after the tour. Although, not officially quitting. In 2011, Wayne Static released his solo album, Pig Hammer. In the years preceding, the band had clashed with Wayne so much, it began to really affect the group. Koichi would leave again due to personal reasons, and Compost would take a break and tour with Soulfly, leaving a bitter Wayne to spread rumors of Compost quitting the group, although, again, he maintains that he never did. And it seems after getting his solo tour out of the way, he decided to reform Static X, however at this point none of the other members were willing to join him, or interested at all in doing anything with Wayne. Blame would be traded and insults thrown, but an agreement was eventually reached that would basically let Static essentially lease the Static X moniker to do a glorified solo tour, making it clear that he, Compost, didn't quit and has not relinquished his rights regarding the group. He just had enough of Wayne. While it's technically speculation, everyone seemed to be tired of Wayne's drug use, and it would seemingly be his addiction that halted the Static X tour as a drug bust caused by Wayne caused the tour to cancel most of the dates and piss off many promoters, and would see club guarantees and such start to drop dramatically, putting a bad name on Static X. Although, Wayne would claim it was due to a hernia, and requested from Compost to put the lease agreement on hold until he recuperated, an offer which Compost intelligently declined. This would lead to mudslinging in the metal magazines and contradictory stories, and would also lead to another Wayne Static solo tour, this time not using the Static X moniker, but still going on tour for the 15th anniversary of Wisconsin Death Trip, Solo. Static was kind of hoping that his name alone would draw on fans, and with smaller clubs being booked, it all seemed very doable. However, cancellations and Wayne's iron fist seemed to damper the experience, and the whole thing kind of left a bad taste in his mouth, it seemed. By this point, none of the members of Static X were in contact with Wayne, and his drug use grew to not only alcoholism, but prescription drug use, a trait most blamed on his bride, Tara Ray, claiming he never dabbled with the stuff until meeting her. And just after the solo tour and 15th anniversary of Wisconsin Death Trip, Wayne Static passed away at the age of 48, and while prescription drugs and alcohol were found in his system, the death was ruled natural. So this would be the end of Static X. The rest of the band members, who weren't on good terms with Wayne before his death, still did their respectful thing, and quietly dissolved Static X for good. <sighs> Nah, suddenly they were all friends, and on good terms somehow, and ready to regroup to pay respect and give homage to their hero and beacon of morality, Wayne Static. What better way to honor a friend than to make money off his unused vocals and hire a bizarre masked frontman to shamelessly rip off Wayne's look and style then release a double album to capitalize on the whole thing. You know, to honor their good friend Wayne. While I get that, a lot of the fans don't really seem to care. You know, it could literally be anybody behind that mask. Although, they chose Edsel Dope, which I understand. If I was in Dope, I'd want to wear a mask too. What a fucking cash grab. 
This to me is the ultimate fall of Static X. I mean other bands have lost and replaced singers, and why not? The bands worked hard too, they deserve to make a living, right? But it's a far cry comparing acts like ACDC, who went from Bon Scott to Brian Johnson, retaining the overall flavor, but not being a complete ripoff. Or even bands like Thin Lizzy, who went on after the death of the legendary Phil Linnett. And while they fucking suck ass now, their lead singer is not a ripoff of Linnett. Rather, he just sucks. Imagine another well-established band whose singer dies. Then instead of dissolving respectfully, they hire some jack-off and then they put him in a mask. Then keep going. Yeah. No, Static X took it to a new level. Even with other bands of recent memory who basically hired a phony version of their previous singer, <clears throat> Static X proved unmatched when they paraded a fake-ass Wayne Static on stage to promote the 20th anniversary of Wisconsin Death Trip, including fake Slim Jim hair and all, a mask apparently made by Twiggy Ramirez's wife for some reason. And I know I'm hating on this stuff, but I honestly don't think it's right, so of course I am. But I wasn't there and I don't know the ins and outs of their relationship with Wayne. But it's obvious via interviews and such that Wayne was indeed estranged from the rest of the guys. And there were no plans on reformation. And it all seems very convenient that everyone is back for one last cash grab, I mean a double album, after Wayne's death. Familial blessings or not. Static X plans to release the first part of their double album Project Regeneration Volume 1, again as a way to honor Wayne. However, the origins of the album go back to the Start of War sessions, and they supposedly uncovered multiple vocal tracks and demos turned into the label by Static himself. And supposedly pressure from the label had them re-record and rework um, and also kind of retool a lot of the songs that were on the demos as to not sound too much like the demos. You know, the demos in which former problematic guitarist Trip Eisen wrote most of the music on. I'm guessing that had nothing to do with the reworking of the intellectual property. Nothing to do with it at all. Eisen would then claim to have written up to six songs being used on the album in which Campos had this to say. When asked by a fan on Instagram whether the band was working with Eisen, their account responded, Listen, let me make this very clear. Wayne, Tony, Ken, and Koichi are the original lineup of the band and we are celebrating our 20th anniversary and memorializing our friend Wayne. The three of us and Wayne are the total focus of this album and tour. That guy was in Static X for a couple of years prior and to his own personal troubles was fired. His issues have nothing to do with us. He was a co-writer on songs with isolated vocals that have never been heard and they are very special to some of the final pieces of art that Wayne left behind. Clearly, the guy you mentioned is promoting his new band by mentioning his past involvement with Static X and he is attempting to gain credibility through his past association. The irony meter here going through the roof. Tony, Koichi, and Ken entered the studio together along with their touring vocalist, Zero, and they have been working diligently to craft some amazing music underneath Wayne's unreleased vocal tracks. Tony, Koichi, Kenny, and Zero are the only people participating in the recording of this new album. Aside from Wayne's vocals and a couple guest vocalists, nobody else is involved in the recording and production of this album. Tony, Ken, Koichi, and touring vocalist Zero are the only people that have been in the studio recording. End of story. Alright, I think we got the picture, man. Luckily, Wayne left behind a lot of cool music and made the bland new metal landscape of the time a bit more tolerable and managed to not put the same album out over and over again. But for the future, who knows, maybe we'll get some more phoned-in music videos plastering Wayne's image around, 
Maybe we'll get a brand new album with Ed's old dope or Zero or whatever doing originals because that wouldn't suck, right? I guess we'll see what happens when the new album is released in July. But as far as I'm concerned, Static X died with Wayne. I'm sure I'll get a lot of hate, but as I said, I don't feel it's right. And also, who cares what you think? This is my channel. Go sit outside. And before leaving an angry comment, be sure to subscribe. As I'm sure you'll love the rest of the videos in the Rise and Fall series. Also, have a sense of humor, would you? I'll be looking to see what happens in the saga of Static X. As it seems, they have some sort of path etched out for their future. When it comes to metal bands I used to love as an angry 7th grader, but would go on to loathe in their latter career due to being world-class phonies, I can go on and on. But I won't.